Hi everybody, it's Dr. Beachcomb. That's your shop shirt. It looks very cheery for the holiday. So I'm going to do a short tutorial today for you on beach rocks and minerals. And I'm not a geologist, so the caveat here is I might make some mistakes. Please bear with me. Feel free to correct me. Please do it nicely. But it'll give you a taste, and I'm going to turn you on to some really fabulous sites so you can do a lot of exploring on your own because that's really the best. I mean, I was busy for two days preparing for this and I don't retain all the information um, very well. I mean, I am 70 now, but we'll get started. And um, I'm sure you're gonna see some of the rocks that you love and you've collected and you'll get a feel for, you know, what exactly they are, where they come from. So there's three types of rocks. So let's start with igneous. Igneous rocks are volcanic rocks. They come from molten lava, magma, or lava that cools and solidifies. And there are two basic types. Intrusive igneous rocks, such as granite, that solidify below the Earth's surface. This is granite. Now, the fun thing about this granite, I brought a neat little tool here, and I'm going to suggest that if you haven't bought this, this is a really great... Uh, UV light to get. It's a uh, play to cool. It's one geologists use and it, it can charge. It has a rechargeable battery. But if, if Grace can slide under here for a minute, let me show you how cool these are. These are granite with sodalite in them. So they glow. Can you see that? It's wonderful, especially at night. Anyway, so granite is an intrusive igneous rock that solidifies below the Earth's surface. And then there's extrusive igneous rocks, such as basalt, obsidian, which is, you know, the glass, pumice, and rhyolite. So this is rhyolite. I found these on the beaches of, um, of uh, uh, Seaham, England. And I really never knew what they were, but it looks to me to be rhyolite. I could be wrong. You can correct me if I'm not. But a lot of the wishing stones we all love and collect, these are also basalt with quartz strains in them uh, that run through them. This one looks to be a basalt rock with a little bit of a uh, serpentine or adventurine in it. This is a basalt rock that fascinates me. Clearly it was some, it was in some incredibly intense heat uh, pressure situation where it's split open and then it looks like red quartz hematite crystals filled up in it. Jasper too, which is also has a lot of quartz in it, is considered an igneous, an igneous rock. And then of course there are these beautiful, beautiful uh, brimstones, which are very um, soft, worn um, uh, igneous rocks, lava rocks. Okay. The next one we're going to go to are uh, septarian. Septarian are the sedimentary rocks, um, septarian nodules, um, like these. This is this is called a, a septarian nodule. The sediment. I messed up. These are sedimentary rocks, not septarian. This is a septarian nodule. So it's clay and silt that created that. But the sedimentary rocks are. Um, things that came from when particles settled out of water or air, um, uh, corals that broke down, um, calcium carbonates, uh, uh, clays, silts, things like that, and they compressed. For instance, these, which are on, found on Malibu, are compressed limestone, fascinating shapes you find over on the beaches of Malibu. This guy looks like a little face, doesn't he? Hey, Jimmy Durante. Um, and then over here in England, you find these wonderful um, little hagstones or the beginning of hagstones. This is a true hagstone that you see through it. And I talk about hagstones, I think, on one of my blogs. This one, I think, is made of sandstone or perhaps limestone. This one is made of uh, something I'll get to in a little bit, chalcedony, which is a type of quartz, uh, uh, microcrystalline quartz. Anyway, is it micro or macro? I'll get to that. So these guys here, oh, so this here, this is a clay baby from Washington State. This is silted clay that's been compressed and oozed out. And then these fellows uh, 
are um, limestone, but they look like rocks, but actually what they really are are fossilized corals. These are the Petoskey stones from the Lake Mich Michigan area. Beautiful, beautiful, 350 million year old stones. And then these are coral chain um, rocks, heliocytes. These are fossils too. This is also from the Lake Michigan area. Okay, so then we have the third rock type, and that's the metamorphic. And the metamorphic really are rocks that come from one of igneous or sedimentary. So they will come from um, uh, pressure or a composite of different minerals and, and rocks put together. This one is called gneiss, and it has uh, striated bands in it, and uh, quartzite and adventurine. These are also composites, and these, I find the metamorphic rocks, a lot of them are incredibly um, uh, smooth, wonderful to the touch. They've been around a long time. All right. I don't know. Anyway, these little nodules are all over uh, England, the Thames, the Thames River, when you go mudlarking on the foreshore. Flint is a type of quartz, has a lot of quartz in it, and it was used, it's hard, and it was used as tool making. This was something someone was forming at some point. I'm not sure exactly what they were making. And then, but when flint breaks, it has a waxy, flint or chert, they tend to use these interchangeably. It has a waxy substance. It looks kind of waxy and buttery and smooth. So when you find these, this is flint. Now, these things, flint and basalt seem to be the two tool making properties that a lot of um, uh, prehistoric tribes used. This one is a basalt piece. It's a pounding tool. See the obsidian in it? You know, obsidian is volcanic glass. So there's a vein of obsidian running through that. And then this fella, who I've showed to you before, is also basalt. It's very strong. This is a pounding tool that was used, like chert. This guy right here, oh, this piece, I'm not sure what this is. They say sandstone, but look at all the lettering on it. Now, is that man-made? Or is that some kind of... Um, strain of quartz or some other vein of something running through it. I have no idea. And then this guy, what kind of rock do you think this is? Actually, it's not a rock at all. It's glass. It's slag glass from the Big Island. So I think we've covered everything. What I want to tell you, though, is there's a wonderful app. Let me show it to you. This has really helped me a lot because my geologist friend didn't get back to me, so I was trying to figure out all of this on my own. Right here, Rock Finder. And if you hit that, Rock Identifier, and you get it a week for free, and for $30 a year, if you beachcomb a lot, it's really worth it. So I can take a picture of a rock, which I'll do, let me do one that really stands out here. I'll take a picture of a rock, and it will pull up other rocks like this. Look at this. So it tells me the different types of rocks that it might be. And then it describes the rock. Basalt is a dark iconic rock that forms lava, that forms when lava rapidly cools. And it gives you all sorts of wonderful information. I think this is one of the best apps I've ever found for a beachcomber. And I would really suggest that you all um, consider getting this. The other site I wanted to tell you about is, um, is um, Rock Tumbler. Now this is a commercial site. He sells rocks to tumble, but he also has wonderful tutorials on the rocks. So you can go in there and try to find your rocks and learn more about them. So doing this worked up a sweat, man. Uh, I hope I taught you a little bit. I did my best. Um, Thanks for tuning in. Comments are always welcome. Hang in there, wear a mask, stay well. Bye.